Who's starting at quarterback? We won't know for a while. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's site editor with Athlon Sports is Inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day as we are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. Lars, we've got a really fun show coming at all the everydayers today. We're talking recruiting 2025, 2026, a lot of fun stuff going on over the by a week. We're certainly going to dive way into that. We're going to talk about the two guys that won weekly out of some Big Ten. That's Demond Williams and that's Russell Davis. But we also got to talk about Demond Williams and Will Rogers because Jed Fish, as we talked to him on Monday, he didn't name a starting quarterback and he said we're not going to know until game time. Also, just a reminder to all the everydayers out there, if you like everything we have to offer, please make sure to like the video. Comment down below any questions, comments, concerns you might have. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast as it all, as it all really does help us out a lot. But Lars, I don't know if we were expecting anything different when Jed Fish took the podium today. No, but I mean, if you read between the lines, he, I kind of, so let's peek behind the curtain a little bit here. Christian Capel, friend of the program on my leg, does great work. And myself really kind of lined Jed up for this one because I asked Jed, how confident are you that DeMond could actually start a game and lead the offense? Because every time he's come in this season, it's either been – he's come in, I think, for three or four snaps in the first quarter, but it's usually been either the second quarter or the second half. And most recently it's been Iowa second half, Penn State second half, and now UCLA second half. There's a difference in starting a game because, as we talked about throughout the season, do you bring DeMond in on first down to spark a drive or do you let the drive keep going and then try to you know bring DeMond in to salvage a drive? There's a difference in terms of a mentality. And Jed Dancer, I think, was kind of telling. It's also not surprising. He's like – yeah, I have total confidence in Demond. It just the way he yeah. said it, the delivery was like, I, "Yeah, I'm confident that Demond could do this." If I happen to name him the starter, he didn't even bother saying if I name him the starter. It's just like, look, I think we all know where this leads. The question is, Jed has to do. How does Jed kind of frame it to where it doesn't look like he's throwing Will out or you know, kind of just brushing him aside? Because again, as Alex Fashion uh, mentioned to me after the press conference, it was like, "What about Will in a bowl game?" What do you do then? Like, because Will said on KJR, he's going to play in a bowl game if Utah makes it. They got to the sixth win, so they're going to play in a bowl game. Does DeMond start? Does Will start? Does Will get the first half? DeMond gets the second half? There's there's like, it's a one-game season right now for Washington going into the Oregon game in two weeks. But there is still that optic of like, hey, you still are selling Will getting to the NFL, even if it's an undrafted free agent, because that way if he makes a roster, a la Jake Browning, you say, hey, there's a route. That guy there. Yeah. And, and you know Jed's going to want to sell that. So it's a matter of how does Jed do it? And it's kind of what he said today. It's like, look, we're going to let it play out this week. They're going to practice Monday through Thursday, or Monday through Wednesday, lift Thursday, Friday, Saturday off, get back Sunday. And I think the way that he just kind of said it, again, he's not going to name the starter, obviously, but I'm just going to go out and say it. I would be very, very surprised if DeMond does not start against Oregon. So I'm 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 in the same boat with you at this point, where a lot of what Jed Fish said in the in the same light as, as you just mentioned was really telling. But it was more, you know, he, he talked a little bit about the offense, which is something you and I have discussed on this program as well. Of yeah, you know, there are things we certainly feel way more comfortable running with demand in there than with Will. And we saw that. We saw that with, you know, when they brought him in there to run the read option throughout the season. We saw that when he got extended periods of time, like in this game, like at Penn State, that when he's in there, yeah it certainly feels like the offense just flows differently because it's not just a rhythm passing offense where you'll turn around and pro style hand the ball off where it's okay. We can do a little bit of everything. We can move a lot more. We can get guys into space a little bit differently. So I agree with you on that front. And in a game where your shout out to our friends at FanDuel 20 point underdogs on the road, it's, it's at the point where a couple of weeks ago against Penn state, there's still a lot to play for. There's still a lot where, you know, in the sense of you're, you're fighting for this, you're fighting for that, where that's not necessarily the case anymore. Now you are bowl eligible. Now you have all those things. So if you want to try that moving forward, I get it. We're, we're at that point where, you know, we, we talked about it with our buddy Jake Butt, where he came on here and he said, I wouldn't start demanding the whiteout. Like that's, that's just not where you want to go. 
where this isn't as long of a trip. There are other little factors in here where you can look at it and say, okay, yeah, now we have the benefit of a, of a bye week to maybe give him more reps with the starters. Figure it out, you know, in just any different way you want to slice it. But then on top of that, that confidence and demand comment was very telling. Where you can get, and this has always been something you and I have talked about here. You can get to a bowl game and you can split reps however you want because you know what it's going to be in terms of we know where we are next season. This is just a one game. Let's end the season on a high note. We love this. It's, Jed has said it's for the practices many times, but when you look at it from that light and you could say, all right, yeah, you know, let's give Will the start in his final game. Let's give him this, let's give him that. But at the same point, we already know we're playing for 2025 and at this point in time, we're going to go to demand or every other drive is going to be a demand drive. And you can just find different ways to just coach it the way you want is the best way to say it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I could totally, as I'm not walking back what I just said, but I can envision a world where, yeah, will gets the start, but if they don't score on the first drive or the first two drives, Jed's going to throw demand in there in the first half. Sure. Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to be a case of, Oh, well, let's wait till the second half when we're, you know, up 14, 13 against UCLA because Will threw two interceptions. And now it's like, okay, now we're in crunch time. It's like, no, Jed, I think at this point, that's why I asked the confidence levels. It's like, we know Jed's confident in tomorrow. Like, it wasn't like, yeah. oh, you know, I'm, I believe that Jed is not confident. I'm not saying that, but it's, it's a different level to be a starter. And that's why, again, Will did not lose the starting job because. A fifth-year senior and a true freshman electric, you know, quarterback. There's still progressions. We saw it against Wazoo. We saw it even against Iowa. We saw it certainly against Indiana, where it's like, okay, he's still a freshman. We didn't really see a ton of that against UCLA. And now again, it is UCLA, so it's not Oregon by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not throwing any shade to UCLA. I'm, I'm just speaking facts here. But when you think about it, it's like. That's why I mentioned the Jane Daniels game. Now, yes, it was at Arizona State, as you mentioned correctly. So it's not, you know, it's not a home game for DeMond, but you mentioned the travel. You're not going two time zones. You're going three hours, four hours south to Eugene. Most this entire team, for the most part, has made that trip in some way, shape, or form, aside from the freshmen. Because you're talking about guys that played at Arizona probably played a trip in Eugene. I don't, off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure Prysock played either against Oregon or at Eugene at least once in his career. Same thing with Jonah and et cetera, et cetera. So you kind of just have to think. All these guys already know, okay, it's a different mentality. And I think that's why Jed's emphasizing this is a one-game season, guys. This is, a, this, is, this is our bowl game. Even though you already got the bowl game, this is like your CFP, if you will. Like Washington's not making the CFP this year. But you now have a crack at the number one team in the country to dethrone them. And Oregon's held that perch for longer than anybody this season. And, man, let's just think about this. What else did I ask Jed today when I said, hey, which we'll get to more tomorrow, and actually oh, and to, to a degree – third segment building in 25 with that with that signing class december 4th is less than a week after that oregon game imagine the momentum that jed would have going into signing day yep. going into the portal saying dan landing is 0 and 4 against washington coaches so i love where you're going with that but on top of that just to add on before we move on here another just another a- aspect of that it's not only trying to find a way to beat dan landing on the recruiting trail on the field all that sort of stuff But at the same point, it's, hey, that's your arch rival down there. And if things fall the right way, if Ohio State beats Indiana this week and they beat Michigan next week and Penn State wins out, there's a chance you can keep them out of the Big Ten Championship game. But Lars, here's the other thing, though. Again, we said it, they're 20-point underdogs in this game. So you're not necessarily playing for anything to lose. But if you find a way to win this game, there is a path. There is a realistic shot, especially if Oregon beats, excuse me, not Oregon, Ohio State beats Indiana this weekend. You can keep them out of the Big Ten Championship game with a loss. So you're going to pull out all the stops in this game. We know that. Against your arch rival. Everything like that, right? There, there are so many different way, roads that I want to go down, but we're going to have so much time to do that over the next couple of weeks because right now we've got to talk about DeMond Williams and Russell Davis because they both took home weekly honors from the Big Ten. Which we'll get to right after message from our friends over at Roy. Husky fans, listen up. You need to download the Roy app. You've heard us talk about Roy this season, how they are revolutionizing the NIL industry. Roy allows you, the fan, to have a say in who gets the NIL money. And here's what we absolutely love about Roy. You get your money back if that player transfers. Roy's helping us keep our team intact. And it's actually good for the game long term. Just like when Carson Bruner had his monster game against USC, 12 tackles, 
four PBUs if you include the two interceptions that he had in that game, won him Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. You can show your support for players like Carson by depositing a little appreciation on that player's account. To do that, download the Roy app. You can see what the logo looks like if you're watching on YouTube or go to joinroy.com. Now let's spotlight the Roy slash Lockdown Player of the Week, Demond Williams Jr. He came into the second half, had... They had a touchdown, helped account for another one on Jonah Coleman's one-yard rushing score to end the game. We're going to throw some money into his account on Roy. Every contribution counts. 10, 20 bucks, it all adds up and is going to help your favorite players stay put. Join us and show some love for Demond. Download the Roy app or go to joinroy.com today. Use promo code Locked On. Every athlete from every team is there. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for full terms. Roy, support the players. Change the game. We've also got a message from our good friends over at Game Time because with Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the bluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Just like, you know, we got so many fun games coming up, whether it be Husky basketball, the Seahawks, the Kraken. There's so many games that if you want to go check those out around the Seattle area, you need to go check out Game Time because Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy theater, and so much more. With all-in pricing, you can toggle this feature to show the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And with seat views, you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code to lock down college for $20 off your first purchase. Turn Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. So, Lars, two weekly honors we got to see this week. Demond Williams becomes the second Husky to take home Big Ten Freshman of the Week, joining Kamori House, who got against Northwestern. And Russell Davis won Co Defensive Player of the Week with Matayo Uyagulay from. Uh, Oregon after he had three sacks and was just spectacular. This is really cool to see. No, it really is. And it, it kind of speaks to two sides of the equation here because with DeMond, it's almost like at some point he deserved to get a freshman of the week on it. And it kind of worked out fittingly that you oh, still ends up big. It, it, just seemed, it seemed like, I mean, he hadn't really had that game yet. Like Iowa wouldn't be that game. Indiana, you know, That's what he I'm never had, yeah. but he had the, he has the talent. It's only a week. We, much like when we talk about fall camp, it's like, hey, we saw what the defense was going to look like. We saw what the edge rushers were going to look like. We saw all of it. And so you finally see DeMond get the honor that he deserves. It's almost like, I'm going to put this in the bank for the future. So when he plays next year and balls out, it's like, hey, he was a freshman of the week last year, you know, kind of working with a fifth-year quarterback. So he didn't – he wasn't Dylan Rayola where he's just immediately thrown into a starting job where, again, look sure. how well that's going. Poison, you know, case in point of why you don't always want to start a freshman here. But the point being that – you can look at DeMond and say, look, that's why we're so high on him. Where there's plenty of other freshmen that probably could have got that. I, mean, I can't think of any off the top of my head specifically. Maybe you have Jeremiah Smith. Who knows? But, like, you think about it, and then on the other side of the ball, Russell Davis, how many edge rushers does Washington have? It's like a true NFL edge where it's like Wayne, uh, Davis. You, know, you just go down the li- lane. You just keep going down the list of guys. Isaiah Ward, you know, all these guys where it's like they have two years left here. If they're just scratching the surface. I remember watching Russell Davis in the spring. I'm like, man, he looks like he's playing inside out. It's kind of like a DN, D tackle. Not D tackle, but like a DN, that three tech, you know, not a true edge, but kind of in a three down set. And then, you know, four down, you true edge, wide nine, all that sort of stuff. But he clearly, Jed said it when he came back from the injury earlier in, I believe, October, when he was like, no, he's a true edge. He, he just going to be on the edge. And finally, we got to see it. And it's one of those where it's like, Imagine him as a full season with Steve Belichick next year. Just like these are all like, hey, we're just dropping little seeds. It's like dropping a seed. Like we're just planting a seed. Like th- imagine what this is going to grow into. So I love where you're going with that because with Russell, that was one of the things where I remember when he committed, I was really curious about the take. And I don't, I didn't think it was bad or anything like that. I was just kind of like, there are a lot of guys in this room already. And I felt the same way about, you know, Jaden Wayne in, in that same light and Deshaun Lynch where it's okay. There are already a lot of really talented guys in this room, and I love this, and I'm not trying to discount anybody's talent by saying this, but I was just kind of like, okay, how is this going to work out? There's a lot of talented guys. There's a lot. There are only so many snaps to go around. There are only so many edge rushers you're going to put on the field. So how is it going to work? And I feel like the fact that Russell got hurt when he did and was able to use the season to redshirt now where he missed the first 
uh, eight games of the year. So he's only playing in the final four, which will preserve his red shirt. And I feel like that was somewhat beneficial for him where he came in really light and needed to add a bunch of weight anyway. So that was helpful. And Jed said, Hey, with another full off season in the weight room, we love where he could get to, which is huge. And I, I love that. But at the same point, it's also now, okay, now we get to see what all it's going to look like next year, because we know who's not going to be here next year. And the main piece of that obviously is Voight to where, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a player in the room has the transfer portal from there. You know, Murray's times probably being the, the one to, to watch, especially since he decided to, to walk uh, during senior night for graduation. So that might be something where he grad transfers and uses his eligibility elsewhere in what's already a really crowded room. So that's something that I want to watch there. But having Russell Davis in there it has just kind of really pushed it over the top where we said this on the post game show. We're not going to expect him to have three sacks every week because that's insane. And that's unfair where Jed said it today. He said, you know, some people are working a whole season to get a stat line like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Where that's a fantastic point. But then on top of that, you look at it coming back where we've seen Isaiah Ward develop in a really big way this week. We know Zach Durfee's going to end up coming back with the way his season has gone. And then you get another year of Jacob Lane, of Lance Holtzclaw, of Jaden Wayne. You add all these guys in there and then all of a sudden, okay, this looks like a Big Ten defensive line. This looks like what you want it to look like, getting some more weight on some of these guys and having just a whole bunch of players that can do a multitude of things. That's really helpful. And then, you know, we're going to talk about it more on tomorrow's show. It also frees you up in terms of, hey, we don't think we need to go get an edge rusher in the portal. So let's allocate everything that we might do do there at defensive line, at defensive tackle. And all of a sudden that's really the one position you want to allocate on, on defense. And then offensively, I just, sorry, I just got to get a point in here about Demond Williams. Uh, it's, you're right. It's a long overdue. You love to see it, but he hadn't played enough to earn the award. And the only way you can get that is, you know, if maybe that the touchdown is complete last week, to Decker to graph at Penn state, maybe, but it's one of those things where you want to see him play enough in a win. And yeah, we got that on Friday night, which is awesome. And you love to see that. And it goes back to everything we said yesterday. He's the future of the program. And there is so much to be excited about when you look at what's around him. And then you look at his talent level and what he is able to do when he's on the field. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's ironic that you know, I'm glad you mentioned the Penn State game because it's what happened against Penn State or what didn't happen against Penn State that happened against UCLA. Went two for two in the red zone when Demond came. When Demond came, in, when it was when it was Demond, right? When you talk about the one to I believe Decker and then the second John Coleman run from the one, zero for two in the red zone when you got down to the five against Penn State. So we're seeing in a week to week progression goes zero for two, two for two. Now again massive difference in context here, right? You know, one's the number six team in the country and a white out of 110,000. One's at Husky Stadium against Deshaun Foster. But who, again, I think is honestly kind of surprised some people at UCLA and I think is going to be a fine head coach. I'm not trying to bag on the guy, but there's a significant gap there. But the other thing that Jed mentioned on Monday, DeMond's also going to probably add about 10-ish pounds, give or take. And I think that to me is going to be really telling to see. I don't think it's going to slow him. I think it's going to make those hits easier to take. I just really hope he still tries to get out of pounds on some of those because you don't want what's happening with the Miami Dolphins to happen to DeMond. Like that, you just want to make sure, yeah, add some yeah, good, add, no, 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 I'm not, I'm just saying, like, add some good weight, but still be smart about how you're executing the offense. And I think with Jed having him as a coach, he's going to make sure, like, hey, DeMond, we want you to be able to take these hits. You know, if you need to get hit and, you know, we don't want you to be, you know, fragile, but we also don't want you to take unnecessary hits. And I think the reason why I bring that up, we haven't seen him do that this year. We have once and there was, but it was the fresh, but no, 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 hold on. Cause I'm going to get there. It was what Jed fish called his freshman moment because it was against Eastern Michigan when he lowered his shoulder and was able to run through a guy and looked awesome doing it, but then fumbled like shortly after that, where it's, it's the little things like that, where I, cause I'm glad you brought that up since that point, we haven't seen that we've seen him do a, a lot better job of, you know, just, sliding, doing different things, trying to find ways to protect himself, which is really smart. But that's that one moment where as soon as you said that, that's what just clicked into my head was, yeah, we saw him do it once, but it was coach and it was corrected, which is something where, you know, when we talk about some of the frustrations of the season, it's there were other things surrounding this team that it felt like it took a lot longer to get sorted out than just that, where we saw, you know, DeMond has an idea. He wants to do this and great. You want to make a play, especially with a guy who, 
we saw make some spectacular plays behind the line of scrimmage in that game. But it's, okay, you want to see what he can do going forward, but you also want him to be smart. And we've seen him make those adjustments and learn in leaps and bounds because he's been playing at the rate that he has this season, which is why it, it has been so important to see him in every game and see the way he's been utilized and put him in some of these different situations and all of the ways that Jed has just found ways to get him on the field and get him reps where he wants them so he can utilize them to the best of his ability next season when he's starting. Exactly. And I think that, that and that's why, yeah, again, as much as Husky fans hate to hear it, this was a building year, not a rebuilding year, but kind of a foundation year. Lay the foundation, get everything in the system, get offense and defense, get it scrap the special team situation. We're just gonna we're just gonna pitch that and burn that and start fresh in 2025. Yeah. But for offense and defense, it's like you see the foundation, it's all there. And now you're just gonna try and sprinkle some pieces in, whether it's in the portal. Most of it's going to be in that freshman class, though. I have a feeling. Yeah. I mean, talk about 16. We'll get more into it during three the week. But 16 incoming freshmen right. in January? That's massive. Maybe not just 16. We might see a couple more here, too. But we'll get to that on the other side of the break. Right after message from our friends over at Mint Mobile. I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals or argue football with an Oregon fan all day just to save a few bucks. It, ha it has to be easy. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless, $15 a month, with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called him out on it. Turns out it really is that easy to get wireless, $15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. To get started, all you have to do is go to mintmobile.com slash college. There you'll see that right now all three-month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for $15 a month. To get this new customer offer, and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just $15 a month. Go to mintmobile.com slash college. That's mintmobile.com slash college. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash college. $45 upfront payment required. Equivalent $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. So Lars, while we were recording the show, some of the, the everydayers over on our YouTube stream might have seen me have to reach out and check my phone here because very interesting. Uh, Quade Carr, who is somebody who was on an official visit over the weekend uh, uh, for the UCLA game, along with Peter Lange, three-star offensive lineman, who is uh, current or was currently a San Diego State commit, decommitted while we were recording the show. This is a guy who uh, he's was offered by Scotty Graham back in March and still ended up uh, committing to San Diego State in May, I believe. Uh, decommitted as we record this on Monday evening. And this is a guy who I'd be surprised if he doesn't end up in Washington. But what I'm really interested about is this is a kid who not necessarily the highest rated. I believe he's somewhere in the low sixties in terms of running back rankings on 247 sports. But this is a guy who plays at Servite High School in the Trinity League, where Jed Fish and his coaching staff have had some very strong ties. You know, you think of uh to Tyrell McMillan and No Feeder right off the top there. But this is a guy who Scotty Graham has done a really good job with his running backs. And I wrote about him a little bit over on Husky's Wire this morning. And I said that he's got a type, which is two types. He likes a thunder and a lightning back. And he got that in the 24 class. He got Adam Muhammad, who, make no mistake, he can run as well. But a true just lightning speed guy in Jordan Washington. And with Julian McMahon, who it does really, really well between the tackles. Quaid Carr is a guy with a really nice track speed who can come in and just be a change of pace back after a redshirt year, especially if General Coleman comes back. I was going to say, like, the, the one thing that this kind of leads me to is what does this do for the room? Because there's a lot of dudes in that room, it's, you know, with or without Jonah. So got Adam, Jordan Washington, jo Julian McMahon, maybe one of the guys in that, you know, the upperclassmen in that room departs via the transfer portal. I, I'm not going to speculate on names here, but I'm just – and I'm not saying Jonah. Jonah's not the guy that I'm referring to there, by the way. Just, just to be clear, yeah. if Jonah goes anywhere, he's going to the NFL. Just let's be very clear about that. But with that being said, you know, you kind of look at it. It's like, well, because we've seen Jordan Washington get in, I think, one game this year, right? Like it was against Penn State. Yep. We've seen Adam Muhammad, as I said before the season, when I probably should have doubled down and parlayed this into two, that Adam Muhammad would play every game this season. 
I know you felt similar but when we were doing our bowl prediction for the season. I remember that was one of the things I said. And so, because we both shared that sentiment, I just decided to take it. But it's one of those where you look at that room and it's, well, Scotty Graham's not afraid, afraid to play freshman. We haven't seen as much usage out of Sam Davis, Sam Adams uh, recently. Daniel Angata also graduates, I believe. After, I don't know if he has one more year left. I Seems like he's been in college for a while, but you know he could be another guy where if he ends up leaving, that's where the spot comes in. And I'm glad you mentioned the Thunder and Lightning because, yeah, Julian McMahon, he is a he can run, but he is certainly the Thunder. And imagine now you're looking at okay, well after Jordan Washington, what do you have? And that's the thing we talk about year in and year out. Now, yes, he's only a three star. Jordan Washington was a high four star, but it's right. like look at what Scotty Graham has done with Jonah as a three star. All these other guys, and it's like Scotty Graham as a former NFL running back knows how to get guys in the league, and he knows what he's looking for. Right, and so this is something where I know you mentioned it, but there could be two running backs that we see leave the room if one person decides to transfer, and we know Daniel and God is out of eligibility. So this is one of the things where it's becoming just a two-for-two, two. and then I'd be curious to see if that's a just a strategy that Scotty Graham wants to use going forward, which I'd be really curious about because they already have one in 2026 in Ansu Sanoe, and we've seen some other offers go out, and I feel like there are a couple guys where it's, yeah, if that guy wants to commit, we're absolutely going to take him alongside Ansu. So I'm curious to see what that looks like, but then we got to move on to 2026 as well where Esun Tafa, who goes to Corner Canyon High School in Utah, uh, got a crystal ball projection from Blair Angulo on Monday to pick Washington. And this is a guy who is a four-star offensive lineman. And I feel like whenever, I I don't know about you, whenever I get recruiting questions from anybody that, you know, might jump into my replies on Twitter or whatever, it's always, can you play offensive line? Shout out to some people who ask me that question every single time deliberately. But I feel like this is a fantastic get where he's ranked inside the top 150, I believe, for 247 Sports right now in the uh, 2026 class. And this is the kind of guy who getting somebody like that in the boat this early would be a massive win for this coaching staff. And you know what it reminds me of directly is Cham Talele. I'm not saying like, yeah. like you're talking two interior guys, four star guys, West Coast ish guys, Utah, California, same sort of thing. But the point <laughs> being that no, do not do not <laughs> don't don't give me a yeah. <laughs> do not chat that for like Utah's a West Coast operation. But oh, I will. With that being, what do you want to say? Mountain and West Coast? Okay, fine. yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter. Rocky Mountain, we'll Rocky Mountain. No, no, let's go. Um, but no, but with that being said, the reason it was the same kind of statement where USC was always a school that was going to be around for Champ, but Champ is stuck by it and made that commitment early on in the process relative to when Jed was hired, right? Because Jed came in in January, made his commitment in May. That's five months, four or five months, basically. Let's call it four because Jed didn't really get truly started until February if we're being real, about the 25 class. With that being said, now you're advancing that a whole nother year, and that's what we talked about at nauseum throughout the summer, which is Jed is going to be relentless on the recruiting trail. And we've started to see it with some 26 commits trickle in over the past couple of weeks that we mentioned on yesterday's show. And now it's like, okay, you still need to get those big hosses in the trench. And starting off with another four-star, because again, I don't – I talked to him, but I would imagine like, hey – what is it? Does the attraction of Demond playing with a guy such as a high caliber guy like Demond, knowing what he could do with this offense, offensive linemen are going to want to play for Jed, not just because of him as the coach, because Jed said it. It's about the guys in the arena. It's not about Jed. It's about the guys executing what Jed wants to do. Jed can call the greatest game if he wants, and they can lose by a hundred if you don't have the sure. right players. And so that's why Jed knows. Look, I need to get the best of the best offensive linemen. And Utah, what, what do we always say about Utah? You have an offer from Utah to play offensive line, you check a box. I don't know yeah. exactly who else he has offers from off the top of my head. I'm trying to, you know, kind of run through that. But as a four, I know Miami's know. well in their form, which is another one where Mario Cristobal will get some, you know, his development is uh, along the offensive line is usually the one thing that you can say that's uh, that, that, that that's the nicest thing I'm gonna say Mar- about Mario Cristobal on the show. But if he wants you as an offensive lineman, that's usually a sign that you're doing something right as well. Exactly, and that what is what Brandon's clearly able to identify offensive linemen and build those relationships, cultivate those. Where we look at the offensive line classes they're bringing in in twenty five, with or without Zach Stauskowski, I'm not saying that's irrelevant because Stauskowski is like the cre- you know, kind very of relevant. Very, very relevant in that. But even without him, it's still a solid class. It's not like if you lose Stauskowski now, it's like hey, we got a five star and a bunch of two stars. It's like no, no, no. You got a really good class, but you need to keep Saskowski, and it's building that positive momentum. And so getting these guys early on in the 26th class, I mean, again, we don't know when he's going to commit. I mean, obviously, I think people might know by now if you follow any type of recruiting. If a guy gets a crystal ball and multiple crystal balls by the uh, national experts, kind of know what's coming. It's just a matter of when. 
And so we'll be curious to see when does it happen? When does it come to fruition? Because all this positive momentum is, again, we'll, t- we'll revisit it on October, on uh, November 31st or, you know, December 1st, whatever, whenever we get to the show next after the Oregon game. But if you can continue this positive momentum, like that's a massive sticking point. And yes, you're going to still have to fight off big schools for these. You know, Miami's still going to keep pushing, and all these schools are going to be Oregon offered him. So he's going to keep pushing for them. But the fact that kids are saying, you know what? I got over a year to decide. But I want to hitch my wagon on Jed Fish and Brennan Carroll. Yep. The other recruits see that. And the amount of guys I know, you've heard it as well, that I mentioned Zadrius Rain and say, like, hey, I want to play with Zadrius. I want to play with that person. I want to play with Dylan Robinson. Some of these, a lot of these other guys. Talent attracts talent. Look at the wide receiver room. Look what's about to happen with the wide receiver room. We'll just leave it there. Lars, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support, and thank you so much for making Lockdown Huskies your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Lockdown Big Ten podcast. Our guy Craig Sheehan puts the Big Ten first. When everyone else overlooks it, you can find Lockdown Big Ten on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you like everything we have to offer here, make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, we're there, we're everywhere. We're updating this channel through content every single day. So make sure you hit that like button, click that little bell, so you never miss when we post a new video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them right down below in the comment section. And if you're audio only, please leave us a five-star review as it does help us out a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.